Hello everyone, you're watching Let's Talk About Prepping. I'm Tyler, your host, and in this video, we are going to just hang out, chat a little bit, and talk about some down-to-earth, just practical prepping, homesteading approaches, ideas, methods, pretty much just a freestyle chat about those topics. Nothing too special or pre-scripted. Uh, Anthony over at Palmetto prepared, Now we're simply talking. We decided to go ahead and just have a little bit of a chat on these topics. There's been a lot of other stuff being talked about in the community. Hello, Ogre Dad. <clears throat> and sometimes the discussion sways away. Here we go. All right. What's up? What's up? Discussion sways away from uh, what might be considered practical topics. So we decided just to have a little bit of a discussion about <clears throat> that. How's it going, Tony? I'm doing all right. How you doing, man? Doing good. Still trying to set up my stream. You guys can probably hear Odie out there. Is that who that is? I'm just kidding. All right. Well, Tony, right before you popped in, I was just filling everybody in on the topic for tonight. Just talking about down-to-earth, practical homesteading, prepping approaches. Uh, nothing too specific. Just uh, concepts, mindsets to be in to avoid getting stuck in echo chambers and uh, having just your one set idea about how things are going to go and, and not be open to... Uh, the more practical reality of it. <clears throat> I mean, let's Give be me honest. One second. I'm going to need to plug my computer in. No problem. What's up, Ogre Dad? How you doing, man? All right. I lose you guys for a second. <clears throat> no, you're good. Looks like a little pixelated, but one sec. Sorry. Go ahead and cover for a second, Tony. I've lost my uh, audio. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, we got Will. Hey, Will. All right. Mainly the reason why. Uh, Tyler wanted to do this, and I completely agree with him, is because there's a lot of people that take things out a little too far uh, in terms of we got to constantly uh, shoot for the fences, I guess you could say. Like, you know, you don't want to go every time you walk up to the plate and try to hit a home run. Sure, it may sound cool, but uh, in reality, you really have to pay attention to just getting somebody on base a lot of time. Uh, that's a good baseball metaphor. I don't really watch baseball, but, hey, it works out. Uh, when it comes down to – being prepared or whatever lifestyle you may want to live, uh, the chances of things happening through weather, something, you know, that's a pretty common occurrence is going to happen most likely in your lifetime more than once. So might as well prepare for that kind of stuff versus the things that, uh, yeah, they may get a lot of play, a lot of, you know, glamour, but, <clears throat> uh, you know, comments, all that fun stuff. Will that actually happen? Hey, I'm sure it will. Should you prepare for that over your standard flood, hurricane, tornado, bad storm? No. So. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's the main reason why we want to do this, just to keep people, um, you know, make sure we have a real chat about things that are really going to happen to you, things that are really going to affect people. Uh, you know, it may not be that glamour 
uh, click on me, watch my video kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> but when you have a question and you need to refer back, you can easily come back to the, the video backlog and check out things that are going to answer that question because real life information is being presented. All right. Tyler, you got your chat back yet? Yep. All right. All right. I'm caught up a little bit here. Yeah. Right, cool. uh, pretty much what Tony was saying there. Yeah, I'm not trying to be like a you know a party pooper or anything like that. I, I really do enjoy uh, the fantasy. I think we all do enjoy fantasy every once in a while, and it's okay to spin your wheels about that. But when you your focus meanders to that more often than not, uh, and to the point where <clears throat> you are a one trick pony, uh, and you get that echo chamber that Tyler was talking about, where uh, all your conversation seems to revolve around how much worse things can get. Uh, it kind of takes away from the real point of why we're doing all this and to try to really help people, uh, especially if you're a creator on this fun little platform. Uh, creators need to be focused on helping people, not how many clicks they can get so they can get more money, blah, blah, blah. So, sorry, guys. Uh, or it's far behind where Tony is. So, all right. Tony, why don't you go ahead and say something, respond to this, and I'll see how far behind I am. All right, you just got done talking about one second before I started. All right, cool. For some reason, my uh, Bluetooth headphone kept slaving to my phone, which is about 15, 20 seconds behind you. So every time I thought I was connected here, I was sitting over here. All right, sorry, oh. everybody. I've been having a little bit of technical difficulties here. Hey, but... work them out, man. Work them out. Pretty much what Tony's been getting into there. It's just uh, we want to try to take things back a notch and look at things for a bit more of a practical perspective. Um, it's really easy to get in the weeds with this and focus down on things that just are not going to help you in the, in the situations that you're really going to find yourself in. And far from just looking at individual scenarios, uh, as easy as that is, to try to approach your preps by looking at theoreticals. The approach that we want to try to share that we've been talking about is just changing your lifestyle in small incremental ways, picking things that are going to benefit you both now and later, uh, usually things that are time tested and traditional. I mean, none of this is really new stuff in the prepping or homesteading community, at least for, people who are really looking at doing it from a practical perspective. But there's a big difference between uh, making your checklist of what YouTube channels and articles online tell you what to do to be a good prepper or to be somebody who has a garden or whatever. There's a big difference between that and just filling out those checklists, which is the starting point. This is where everybody starts. We've all been there. But we feel that the next step beyond that is making your lifestyle about that. Not just having this be your hobby that you do to sort of make yourself feel that you've covered that base, but to actually start adopting it as something that you want to do, that you want your hobbies to be things that are going to contribute to this. And you can quickly make it something that's beneficial to you. I mean, we've been talking a lot about crafts and just hobbies, skills that will pay you back now. If you've got any kind of barter market in your area, you can find things that make this more than just uh, some weird thing that you watch on YouTube and don't talk to anybody about. Because one thing that's that makes you laugh because we were talking about this. <clears throat> most of the stuff that we talk, I mean, if, if most of the stuff that you watch on YouTube about prepping and homesteading and all this stuff, usually prepping conspiracy and stuff, if it's not something that you could ever have a sane discussion with your family or somebody on the street with just a random person, a coworker or whomever, you might want to take a step back and ask yourself if you're entrenching yourself in conversation that is rational. I mean, I know that we talk about things that are unsettling to the majority of people, but all right, I do not want much or any conversation about 
the coronavirus. But yeah, I'm right there with you on that one. About one week into this, and mind you, we are quite a while into this. But I mean, a week or less into it, it was already such a big obsession for everybody. And I was trying to discuss with because I talked to coworkers and friends and stuff on a low top down level basis. Yeah, I'm, I do a lot of YouTube stuff and my community often overlaps with conspiracy theorists. And man, they are just going nuts over this. I mean, they're going crazy over this coronavirus thing. And just it's, it's difficult to relate the obsession without just sounding crazy because a normal person is like, oh, wow, that that sounds like they are really going crazy over that. And it's just to them, it doesn't compute. And a lot, I mean, I'm, I'm not focusing in on any one thing. I'm just saying a lot of the conversation that we have, which I'm guilty of enjoying quite a bit, not coronavirus, but just conspiracy theory, whatever. I indulge in that. But at the end of the day, that's because it's sort of a guilty pleasure. It's sort of just from having been doing this for quite a while, you know, you, you enjoy the conspiracy, theory, conspiracy theories and all that kind of focus on stuff because... It's fun at the end of the day compared to just the nitty gritty of slowly and incrementally improving your lifestyle to become more efficient and stuff. Um, so I don't know. We're trying to get away from things that you would not be able to talk to a normal person about and have them think are cool to things that are going to both help you in those situations and which you could talk to a person about like, I'm going to start brewing cider. Anybody, you can tell, um, I mean, unless they're really seriously against alcohol or something, you can tell them, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to get into cider because it's just a good skill to have. And you can, you know, you can maybe trade with friends and stuff like that. And nobody's going to go, oh, you're a crazy conspiracy theorist because you want to just be sustainable and, and stuff like that, have down to earth traditional skills. Uh that's pretty difficult to do, even with just food storage. You know, it's hard to go up to a normal person and go, hey, you should probably have six months of food storage. You know, they're going to ask you why well, and what kind of uh, world perspective tells you that you need to have that. Whereas, you know, there's a lot of skills like just down to earth homesteading traditional skills that are not crazy to have. Anyways, Tony, I'll give you a second. No, no problem. Um, I mean, just to jump on that absolutely uh i think a lot of people focus on going so far down the rabbit hole they, they forget about simple things to get people into the i wouldn't say a hobby but the lifestyle uh and it's not like one of those things where you got to be absolutely insane to do it uh i i choose a more personal self-reliant approach i like the fact that i can grow my own food obviously not all of it i'm gonna have to supplement stuff but i mean to be able to grow my own food, to be able to build my own stuff, to not really rely on somebody else because I got into this whole thing, not because I wanted to be a prepper, but because I wanted to make sure I knew what was going in my family's mouths. Uh, you know, all the stuff that's been going on to increase crop production uh, has really led to a lack of diversity in uh, gardening and you know produce and all that stuff. And uh, when it comes to meats, you really have no option, but when you go to the, you know, the local supermarket, you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know anything about it. All you know is, hey, there's beef. It doesn't even say the, the region it comes from anymore. They took that out in, from, in Congress, what, two years ago? So, sure, hmm. some manufacturers can put it on there. Yeah, USA beef or uh, Mexican beef or uh, Brazilian beef, but they don't have to. And that's the thing, like, especially when it comes to really dangerous stuff like pork and chicken, uh, you know, how we are in, right now with China. Now, I'm not talking about the flu thing, but I'm just saying in general, food practices alone, like uh, I don't want my fish tilapia to come from uh, crap ponds in China. I don't. So, well, and just how many times it's handled. I mean, you never know. I mean, I think you have even mentioned in some of your videos. I mean, a lot of your food is handled by up to 15 people or something like that by the time it gets to you. You know, it's just as opposed to, I mean, you can find somebody who, who grows cows and you can get you know, mm -hmm. split, uh, split a cow with them or split a cow with four people and 
it's not going to last you all year, but it gets you going in that, in that mindset. And I have had local, you know, grass fed beef where I knew that person who had made it. And there is a big difference in the peace of mind and, and even just the quality of the meat with that kind of thing. Absolutely. Hi, Chase and Life. Team Poco, how y'all doing? <laughs> uh, but one of the main things for me, especially when it comes down to, to meat, uh, I don't have to, how should I put it? Without trying to sound completely uh, uppity, but there are people out there that have to eat the lowest or the cheapest that they, they can. I mean, let's just be honest here. Mm-hmm. That we, you're struggling to put food on the table, and I understand that. And certain mm-hmm. markets, absolutely. I mean, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. But I uh, have shuffled my money around and you know worked on my finances to the point where I really care about where my, my meat comes from. And I want to make sure that an animal has somewhat of a – uh, you know, decent life. I don't want to be eating, uh, you know, pig that's been literally in a cage one foot bigger than its, its body, its whole life. I don't want Stressed that. Out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause it really does come back into the meat in terms of, uh, mm-hmm. fatty acid, uh, omega six, uh, really high in stress level cortisol. And you eat that not to mention some of the food mm-hmm. that they eat. So if mm-hmm. I can avoid all that by doing what I'm doing, then that's why I did this. And that's why I, you know, set my whole life in motion to where I buy a country property. I'm living rural. I'm growing my own stuff. I'm learning how to do it. And I think that people out there can relate more to that than they can. Hey, uh, we need to put two years of food stash away just in case uh, something happens and don't touch it, period. And make sure you have 14 weapons stashed away and make sure you have a, you know, hardcore medical kit with a surgical kit, just in case all society breaks down and you run across a surgeon who you're willing to trust their word on it to uh, pull out your appendix. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I'll even, I'll admit I'm guilty of that. My, I don't have it in here, but my trauma kit, I, I spent definitely more than a basic first aid class in it. Now I've got basic first aid understanding, Mm -hmm. but it's like you say, I mean, before getting a, a surgeon kit, at least know that you can stop, you know, at least take stop the bleed classes, which are free whenever they come around. But <clears throat> almost all of us are guilty of, of sort of doing the set it and forget it kind of prepping, like you're talking that's about. Why, that's why I say it, because I did it too. Uh, I'm yeah, a man and of the kit. Yeah. And that's, <clears throat> it's hard not to. I'm guilty specifically right now of that because. Uh, in my life, I've usually been doing hands-on prepping and, and stuff, but right now I'm renting just because of life circumstances, and it can be hard because a lot of people do rent or, or live in an apartment or things like that, mm-hmm. uh, where it can feel hard to do that kind of thing, but um, there is a lot that a person can do to start shifting their lifestyle uh, and just their thought process towards being more grounded, I guess. And I, it's sort of to a certain degree, I'm preaching. We're preaching to the choir because a lot of our audience is mm-hmm. at this level. But mo- we want to just sort of do a, not a wake up call, but just have everybody step back and ask themselves have they painted themselves into a corner with all of their expectations? Because it's extremely easy to do. It's something that if you, the, you know, the longer that you do this, the more you've realized you've been doing that to yourself. <clears throat> and I mean, I remember 10 years ago, I was, you know, I was in the uh, Obama's going to instigate martial law crowd. You know, I mean, that was, that was me pretty hardcore. I mean, I wasn't out screaming or, you know, doing anything crazy about it, but I believed it, you know, that was part of what really got me like worried about prepping. I never really saw the practical, uh, I thought it was actually happening, but I was, I I saw all the theories and I was like, well, I want to be prepared for if that kind of thing happens. And since then I've evolved a lot, partly just as I've grown between being 20 and 31 years old now. Hey Anna, how are you doing? But my point there being we've all, you know, sort of had our pet theories or pet expectations of what's going to happen. Uh, lately for me, I used to, you know, be a big EMP solar flare person. And I still think that those are 
the oddball that we can never count out. But just lately, especially as I want to start getting my, uh, you know, my lifestyle set up because it's always been my plan to end up, end up <clears throat> on an off grid homestead. And it's always been something I've been working towards. Um, that is not aided by building Faraday cages basically or or owning hazmat suits or things like that those are things which could help in very specific situations but i have spent a lot of money stacking and a lot of money prepping which i could have potentially put towards more practical time worthy things you know well yeah and that's when it kind of comes down to uh is this like a uh, I, you know, I've talked to you personally about this, but the the tier level of the understanding of being prepared, uh, you know, a lot of people never make it out of that first level. And when you've taken a step forward and then look back and be like, wow, I really did get, you know, hardcore ramped up every time the news told me something. And I started getting in my own head and the conspiracy theories and believed things that ended up never coming true. And I'm not saying that none of that stuff can ever happen because it totally can, but uh, like you were saying, you don't want to blow a whole bunch of money on hearsay of something that really has never happened before. Uh, and in my opinion, if it makes more sense to uh, be prepared for normal stuff, living the lifestyle I do, uh, and just using history as a guideline. Uh, obviously, if it's happened before, there's a chance it can happen again. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, these are real. I mean, we've talked about the events, you know, the one in Hawaii. Uh, it's not like, you know, the salt <laughs> event. It can happen. And, you know, it's reasonable if that's one thing that you're worried about to you know go ahead and put some stuff to the side but it's not reasonable to sit there and think that martial law is going to happen tomorrow uh you need to get every gun you can possibly afford on uh from your checking account your credit card max out all your credit cards and have things stashed away in little tubes around your lawn just in case when in reality you know you're putting your family behind by racking up debt and potentially things that you can't afford anyway so that's one reason why I really wanted to do this because I've come, you know, I'm willing to admit my mistakes and my failures. It's like, you know, I really shouldn't have gone as far as I did during the election to buy the weapons that I did. I didn't have to do that. And it really set me back almost a year uh, through my financial progress of what I wanted to do because I kept blowing money, uh, you know, on ammo and guns that never went in, you know. Oh, man, when I was... <clears throat> When I was probably, yeah, around 21 years old or so, uh, I was working. I was That's when I was manufacturing AR-15s and stuff like that. And I was going through at right around 1,000 rounds a week. Just, you know, and also I was, I was shooting that much and also stacking more, you know, about as much again. And I reached up to a few thousand, you know, 10,000 rounds or so stored up and then in the past standard, I don't have that anymore. And, you know, over the past 10 years, partly because of multiple changes in the way that my life has gone, but that was money, you know, that if I had put towards something else or invested or something like that, I mean, I did get a lot of experience with firearms in that period of time, but point being, we've, we've all spent money on things that in the meantime have, have rotated out, you know, and we no longer have most things. If you've been prepping for more than 10 years, You've, you've thrown out a lot of your original preps. And if you'd invested that money or bought land or, or whatever that first time around, I wouldn't be here right now. So that's sort of, I mean, it's not just about that kind of thing, but um, it, it is definitely about asking ourselves, how are we holding ourselves back right now? Well, I mean, you got to think hindsight's twenty twenty. Sure, I didn't know at the time that, you know, Obama wasn't going to ban the guns or whatever, you know, the gun control legislation. I didn't know at the time. And I thought, you know, you believe the, the echo chamber around you. Hey, you know, this is all going to become illegal. So we need to go ahead and get it now. And next thing you know, I put myself into a couple thousand dollars a hole because I wanted to buy every gun I ever wanted now. So, I mean, that's just one example. But when we're thinking about things that we've learned from that and, you know, you know uh, Ogre Dad was right on the, you know, the list comes into play here. That's why I really wanted to jump on that topic because there's too many people out there and myself included who think about their next big purchase or where they want to be. 
And it makes no sense to think about where you want to be all the time when you're not focused on what you've actually done to make your dreams happen already. So uh, it's one thing to be like, hey, yeah, I would like to, you know, you're living in an apartment or you're renting or whatever. And then it's one thing to be like, you know, I want to have a, a house in the country some point in my life. That's fine. That's good. You know, think about what you want to be in the future, but you don't want to sit there and prep so much for that to where you're forgetting normal everyday stuff that, you know, Hey, a storm blows through and knocks out power. Now you're a prepper or prepared person, but you have no food or you don't have a way to cook your food. Uh, say a hurricane. You don't have tarps to cover your roof up with. Yeah, exactly. So basic everyday stuff as boring as it sounds uh, actually, you know, makes sense in terms of people that are searching to come into the, lifestyle the hobby the lifestyle uh, you, you can gradually put people in here instead of hey i'm thinking about prepping what should i do well you need six months of food six months of water three guns body armor and a gas mask tomorrow they're gonna be like you're crazy and they leave mm -hmm. you don't change people that way you change people by by showing them rational decisions like hey you know power does go out you're gonna lose your freezer are you can you cook with them as power goes out because in certain places yeah. like mine, it goes out often. You know, mm -hmm. can you handle that? Yeah, exactly. And you know, that's actually that that is one of the biggest ones that does bring people in is power outage. Um, totally lost my train of thought there. You killed it, Tony. I'm sorry. I'm good <laughs> at that. Hopefully, it'll just pop back actually, in your head. You made me think about how I need it. Oh. See you, Foco. How you, uh, have a good night. Uh, I need to go get my wood stove. It's over at the other property, and uh, it actually looks like it got a bit of rust on it because I was leaving it with family. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're probably going to be seeing a uh, boxwood stove restoration video in the mid distant future. But yeah, just think you know, around here, that's uh, we've got alternative sources. I've got a generator, we've got multi, you know, I've got plenty of propane. So we would have plenty to get us through the interim of a power outage or as long as most power outages do tend to last here. And during that period of time, I would be implementing what I needed to have the long-term stuff. But like you're saying that that is a gap for my, you know, if my power outage lasts more than two weeks, all I've needed to, to do quite a bit of work, you know, driven and come back and gotten my stove set up you know, during that period of time, gotten firewood. Whereas, by the end of this summer, I plan to have at least a quart of wood here, even though I'm just renting. I can't modify the property. You bet if that power goes out for a while, I'm going to knock a hole in a wall or open the window and set something up. But it's not fun. I'd rather be spending that money on a Berkey, but mm -hmm. I don't need that Berkey compared to what I might need that wood stove for, you know? I mean, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge... Uh, firearms fan i i want to have as many as like possibly you know as everyone that i've ever wanted to shoot i want to own just because that's how i am but uh, reality has to come back at some point and be like you know i don't want to set my family behind because i didn't prepare for everyday stuff and here in south carolina where i am uh surprisingly we didn't have any events last year which is really crazy but five uh, yeah five out of the last six years we've had a major storm come through uh I would say major something like hurricane coming from, you know, the Gulf or the Atlantic side that have literally cut up power. I remember three years ago, uh, I got my first deer or four years ago. Now I got my first deer from my property because I just moved here five years ago. And that winter time, I got my first deer from my property. And I was like, this is awesome. And I had it processed. Uh, this ended up being, it was a big deer. So I'm getting like almost 50 pounds of meat from it. And like three weeks after I got it back, the power went out for almost a week because we had a really bad storm and I had to cook all that meat on my grill outside under my porch just so I didn't ruin it because I didn't have anything canned. I didn't have anything ready for it. And I know it sounds stupid, but I didn't want to, you know, the animal to die and it's meat go to waste. So yeah, a lot of it went to my dog, to my cats, some to the chickens, but because I didn't prepare it kind of affected me that way. And I was like, you know, I need to get better at this. So that's why you see me canning so much now. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. Um, man, about where I live, where I used to live, my buddy's dad uh, does. A, he's the local wild game butcher. So I just remember being able to throw meat at him and jerky comes out the other side about a week later. You know, well, he gives you different jerky, but it, it is nice to know how, you know, to have someone who does that or to have the skills yourself to be able to process meat and and make it last longer than a freezer being out for a week. Well, yeah, I mean, that's why I got a generator. Uh, so, I mean, like they were saying in the chat, like that instant right there is like, wow, if I had a generator, I didn't have to cook all this meat for like eight hours and try to yeah. dry it and all that stuff while it's raining hardcore outside for three days. So uh, if I would have just planned better, I could have avoided all of that heartache. And I think that's ultimately what makes a lot of people become prepared, having that really bad moment like oh crap i i could easily you know set my life on a much better path if i would have just done this this and this and there's a lot of people out there that just don't get that they don't care they're just like ah well it won't happen again you can't think like that yeah yeah it it is um you know, just something that you need to approach and get working on, you know. Um, I would have put off having a generator for a while, but I ended up getting one from bartering with a cousin and doing a little bit of labor work. Uh, he does uh, construction and remodeling and stuff. So I've got that basis covered. Um, but there's a lot that, you know, I actually would really like a propane uh, freezer would be one of the best options, I feel. Yeah. Uh, I mean, anything that you can think of now that can put you on a better path. And it doesn't have to be like, my, okay, let's back up. A lot of this stuff that I am I talk about on my channel and we've had this conversation before is you want multi-purpose preps. You want things that are going to not only last you if something really bad happens, but things you can use every day anyway. So yeah, it's nice to have a Jenny uh, just in case my power goes out, but I also worked in construction and you know how awesome it was to be able to roll up to a construction site and, you know, pop my tailgate, start my generator. And all of a sudden, like I'm able to run my tools without having to worry about, you know, waiting for the electrician to hook up power. I could get started before that happened. Mm -hmm. So things like that, I don't have to worry about waiting for a light cart and use that power. I could use my own stuff. So it made more sense for me to buy it when I did. And when it comes down to everyday preparations i mean yeah that hazmat suit or that geiger counter uh it makes sense in a whatever you're thinking category but can you use that every day not mm -hmm. really so yeah i grow my own food i can use that in a hardcore situation but guess what i can also go out there grab something right now and cook the wife a pretty badass meal you know so mm -hmm. yeah and that's you know uh between like you were saying about the generator and just tools in general um it's just well even just that in the food like you said having having food sitting around having the tools that you need it, it really does make a big difference in just your general lifestyle right now that i think a lot of you know if you're if you're somebody who has that or is raised in it you take it for granted and if you're if you don't have it it really does sometimes it's hard to even see the difference that it makes just to, even if it takes incremental changes to to get there, you know, to get that full freezer. I mean, a lot, I mean, I, I'm i a millennial. A lot of my friends, the majority of people that I've grown up with and gone into their houses, whenever we wanted food, even if, even if we, we were going to cook, you had to go buy the stuff because nobody mm -hmm. just has a full pantry. Nobody has, oh, yeah, here it. What do you want? I got a freezer with steaks. I got a freezer with ground beef. I got this down here. Like I got these over here. You know, it, it, there's a huge difference between those two. And there's a huge peace of mind that comes from, like you said, not only having the generator because it's like, oh, finally, my power went out. Let me roll out the generator. It's, it's you know, oh, you know what? I actually have a generator, so we don't even need to worry. We can go have that awesome camp out with all the lights and, like, do the thing because I have a generator. Like, you, you can utilize your things to expand your lifestyle. Or, like you were saying, I mean, you, you go out in the woods, you know, maybe you're building the uh, cabin in the woods or something like that. 
mm-hmm. you've got your power tools. You don't need to go out and use a handsaw, you know? Um, so it doesn't always need to be these, you know, the big situations. It just, the tools, the food, everything just, it, it builds on itself if you're doing it right. And you sort of, you build momentum a little bit. And that's and all this person. is. It's a, uh, it's a, I tell people all the time, especially people that want to jump into it and they, they think they're behind the power curve. I mean, how often have you run across somebody when you're talking to them about whatever, they have a question and then, you know, you may tell them a quarter of what you have and they're like, wow, I'm so far behind. What's the, even the point? And it's like, no, this isn't like a marathon. I mean, this isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. You need to just do what you can right now because even that, you know, three day power outage or three hour power outage. If you have something that someone else doesn't, that one meal that you can make without heat, you know, awesome. That one, what gift you may have gotten that, you know, you got a gift card for $50. You're like, Hmm, I'm either going to blow this on something stupid or I can go uh, take, you know, go get something from Walmart for $40. That's really going to help me out. There's something simple like that. Uh, can really set you on a good path. And, People want to think, newer people especially, they want to think that this is a, uh, uh, I got to buy it all now and learn later. When in reality, you know as well as I do, uh, you can spend your time not spending any money at all and just learning, reading. So, mm-hmm. Yep. Some of my best, all of my best preps, I would say, I can't think of any prep that I have used that rewarded you know having it that wasn't something that would be boring to make a video about you know what i mean Mm -hmm. all like toilet paper toilet paper hands down is the prep that i have gone into my preps to get the most we keep a lot of toilet paper but because there's multiple adults here that do grocery trips and stuff like that it's actually possible for some things like that to get missed because there's no one person making sure that we've got the toilet paper that we like to have. And I've made, I have made videos about this and they're never very popular. I mean, except for the people who agree, but when we run out of toilet paper, that is one of the most rewarding things to be able to say, Oh yeah, but let me go open some of my vacuum sealed toilet paper. It expands and it saves the day. And I mean, it hasn't saved anybody's life yet, but I have a lot of preps that could save somebody's life, which I will likely never use, but the toilet paper, the sugar, those things that I keep whenever someone's like, dang, it's 11 o'clock at night and we're trying to bake some cookies and we're so dangerously low on sugar that we don't want to, you know, we want to leave some for coffee in the morning and stuff. And I overhear that conversation. I come walking out of my room with, 20 pounds of sugar you know Mm -hmm. it's pretty impressive i mean it's when it comes to food especially it's it's one of the greatest things whenever i'm cooking something i'm like you know this thing needs a little bit more and i can walk outside to the herb garden and i have my selection of things to pick and throw in there that's nice uh and you know when it comes to stashing things that you use uh my favorite example is toothpaste toothpaste and toothbrushes i have so many, uh, you know, because I go get them in bulk, basically, because, you know, you get to a certain store and they'll have the buy one and get one. So, OK, I'll grab four or you go uh, and they're having a clearance because they're, you know, they change the packaging. So they're trying to get all the old packaging out. It's the same stuff, but they just change the, the brand colors. So they clearance it out for like 60, 70 percent off. So they're like, OK, and you, I, know, I've, I did this with toothpaste and I grabbed like 20 tubes. Well, we've been living on those tubes for like months and months and months now. And it's nice to be like, well, I don't worry about, you know, thinking about this while I'm at the store. Like, what other kind of toiletries crap do I need? Oh, I did it at one time. So that as simple and mundane as that sounds that, you know, is not exciting to anybody. Hey, it worked. It helps. Uh, it keeps, you know, the household running. So why not? And yes, I'm I'm fully aware that a lot of people uh, do not talk about this kind of stuff because people. I mean, you said you you said it best. People don't watch that kind of content, but you have to determine as a creator if you care. 
Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, yes, I, w- I want people to see my videos. I really do. But I don't want people to think that uh, – how do I put it? Like I don't want people to think that I'm trying to shoot for the fences every single time. Uh, I'm, I'm really trying to hammer – basic things in people's heads that way whenever someone who has that big channel uh has bought a big old gold bar and uh you know all this cool stuff but they can't handle a bill for something that's popped up and they're asking people online for money like the begging things like okay how'd you buy all this stuff and all this fancy stuff that you can't handle a simple household emergency that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you and I have had this conversation mm-hmm. personally about um, preppers who have day jobs and YouTube money, and then still e-beg and where did, you know they're, it's not clearly getting. I mean, I, sometimes they get a truck or a drone or something like that, and they say it's rolling it back into the channel. But, um, anyways, there. It, <clears throat> the point is. We would rather be talking about, uh, essentially, I mean, we've literally said we'd rather sit here and archive videos with low view counts mm-hmm. on topics that are practical. I mean, my most viewed video is about do-it-yourself moisture absorbers. And I'm actually somewhat proud of that. Not necessarily even for myself. It's not a particularly great video. In fact, I'll, I'll redo it eventually with some more tricks and tips once I, you know, get it all, have something of value to add to it and I'm ready to edit it and make it a higher quality video. But why I'm proud of that is that there's three and a half thousand people out there worth who have sought a do it yourself moisture absorber rather than going on Amazon and buying the 50 or hundred pack moisture absorbers that you can get commercially. Um, And most of them were probably not preppers. A lot of them probably were not homesteaders. They were probably craft, you know, like just uh, Mm -hmm. scrapbookers or something like that. But that topic, I made that whenever it came out, it did not get a lot of use. I remember. And I was like, well, I hope that one, I hope that one catches some in the future. That could be (laughs) one that other people end up clicking on. You know, people search do-it-yourself moisture absorbers. But, um, you know, there there are a lot of topics which are not catchy, but which are valuable to cover, especially because there are a lot of people out there who never get exposed to those more practical topics because all that anybody else is doing is talking about the hot topic of the day. And that is the main thing that annoys some of us about a lot of the videos that get made. It is not what other people are doing with their channels because you can make whatever channel you want on YouTube. But there's a lot of, we said this the other day, there's more mud than water in the water now. I mean, it's just, if a person comes into this community and sees what we're talking about, we look crazy. I mean, I have, I have seen people enter our, our, the live streams and all the stuff where everybody's going off about stuff you know, these ideas and not talking about practical, just what you should be doing to be building a sustainable and efficient lifestyle, which is what you need to be prepared. Um, And that's just not the conversation that's being had. And so we want to try to steer back toward that. Well, yeah, you mean you hit the nail on the head there. There's people out there that are so spun up and focused on current events that if you look back at their videos, none of them have any rewatchable uh, clicks. Like you can't go back and rewatch those after two months because this whatever they were talking about is no more. And don't get me wrong. There's sometimes where hey, I'd like to have my opinion out there too, and I have before, just mostly used as, as an experiment. But hey, sometimes I've put videos out there of something that's happened just to see, you know what my viewers think about it. But for the most part, you have to think about when you're putting a video out, will someone click on this next year? Or will someone cl- search for this? Uh, Cause that's what, it, you know, truly is going to help somebody. Uh, hey, mm-hmm. can I be better at what I'm doing? Uh, 
just let me make a video on. I mean, hell, one of my biggest viewers was a uh, ammo, the ammo video. Uh, that thing was completely dead in the water after three days, like most of the videos are. But then six months later, a law got passed, and people are like, "Oh crap! How do I stash ammo?" And they go back and search for it, like mm -hmm. that that type of stuff. Uh, no one's going to go back and be like, "Hey, Venezuela, day three, what happened?" You know. So when mm -hmm. people like this post all these videos uh, about current events, all it does is just bog down the system with superfluous crap that people are going to have to search through pages and pages and pages of stuff just to find basic answers to their question. Yeah, I agree. Um, you touched on something uh, a second ago that I want to go back to about rewatchability and stuff because we've talked about this quite a bit. And I'm going to make a video because we're far enough into the stream that a lot of people are never going to catch this. But I we have talked about, and I really want to push this movement, and this is something that Tony himself has mm -hmm. uh, sort of spearheaded, is... Um, going back and finding quality content and channels that you support. And this has actually been something I've almost exclusively lately. I have not, unless except for a few channels, I don't watch new content lately, except for comedy channels. And a lot of that stuff is 10 years old. But my point here is we're doing back channels. Um, it's a real mark of a good channel. If you can go back one or two years and the majority of their content, you can just watch one after the other because it's all timeless information and it's all stuff that is going to be valuable. It's not talking about, you know, I mean, who wants to go back and listen to somebody talking about a past political election, you know, or some scare that we've already moved on from. I mean, it's somewhat interesting, but not after the third, fourth, and fifth video. But we've been going back and, and watching videos that have rewatchable value from the past. I've been doing a lot of playlisting, so if you actually go back into my playlist, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we've been you know, dredging up from the past that is valuable. And it's really just given us, you know, a clearer perspective on how much crap there is out there lately. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'm really not trying to come across as like a hater. I'm really like, I'm not trying to hate on some of these channels that that's just what they do. Hey, I get it. You know, you're, it's your channel. You can do whatever you want to it. Uh, it's just when, when people are legitimately coming into your streams or your chat, uh, and they're asking how can they become basically prepared with fifty dollars right now? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. what's the first answer you you give them? Like, mm -hmm. do you tell them to go out there and be like, hey, do you want to go buy this, this, and this, and this, or do you say, hey, you need to figure out where you're going or what are you preparing for in the first place? Because mm -hmm. just a simple question, what are you preparing for, uh, can determine leaps and bounds where that money should go. Uh, if you're worried about a financial collapse, what are you gonna do with that fifty dollars? If you're worried about a natural disaster, we're going to do that fifty dollars. Uh, heck, mm -hmm. if you're renting, if you're renting an apartment from a, a landlord who's been trying to sell the property, you might want to stash that into a moving fund. You know, mm -hmm. so simple yeah, things I, like I that. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I, I don't want to be sounding negative. My main point with that is um, asking yourself. You know, why are you here on YouTube? That, that's my main point with that is what are you doing here? What are you preparing for? If you're here for community, if you're here just to, you know, I mean, and, and there's no problem. I've spent a lot of time just hanging out in live streams, shooting the crap, and, and that there's no problem with that. You can't yep. find a lot of better people that are like minded with you than the ones that you find here. And that's why a lot of us are here. But if you're really goal oriented towards getting prepared, you can serve yourself a lot better by digging for those, those diamonds in the rough, if you will. And I mean, there, there are some videos that like some of you are saying in the, the side chat there, you can rewatch that video multiple times in a row and to actually learn something from it. And maybe by the end of it, like 
you might know how to build a raised strawberry bed or something like that mm -hmm. just by having listened to that video three times in a row while doing something else. You at least have it in your head. Although that video was mostly text oriented, I, if I remember. But <clears throat> it's I cool. I, I, I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. I listened to it at work and I was like, I think there's something going on here that I'm missing. But, you know, there, there's there's a big difference between content that is meant to grab your view and get the watch time for the 10 minutes or the live stream or whatever. And somebody who has usually spent hours and hours working on something and boiled it down to a rendered, you know, a thing that they can offer you, you know, a chunk of value because they're trying to, you know, to motivate people and to progress people because, you know, their, their goal is to help build preppers and, and sustainable living people, you know? So mostly it's just ask yourself, why are you here? Why, what is your goal with prepping? And really scrutinize that. Is it is it one specific thing? Are you afraid of the EMP? Are you afraid of that thing? Or are you trying to empower yourself? And once you know what you're trying to empower yourself to do, ask yourself if the content that you're ingesting is really helping you build towards that goal, I guess. And use the content that you watch to, you know, reinforce what you want, you know. <clears throat> I'm not going to get all the secret here with you guys, but I have, I mean, I, I do believe it's not subliminal. It's just reinforcing. I mean, I've been watching a uh, financial channel, uh, minority mindset, and that guy's really mo motivational. I mean, he makes you want to save money just because he's charismatic. He's got charm and stuff, and he's reinforcing and you save your money. Don't waste your money. And he makes you want to do that. And if you're always in these fear mongering streams, even if you're just there to spectate, even if you're just there to talk to the people who are your friends, you're reinforcing your worldview that that's that, you know, that that is the way things are going compared to focusing on things that are going to help you improve your lifestyle. And I'm not saying to, to not worry about what about world events and what might happen, but it's not going to help you build what you're trying to build, you know, and that's what we should be doing here is, you know, working towards productive goals. Well, yeah, exactly. And uh, I think one big, one of the biggest things that I've noticed, especially these days is uh, we have a lot of channels put, you know, out there, a lot of, I don't want to use a certain word, but uh, channels that love their country a lot. And I love my country a lot as well. That's why I joined the military and I served. And, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of my country. However, um, you can't sit there and call people to action if they don't have even a, you know, one paycheck saved. So how effective are you going to be at uh, fighting the good fight or whatever if your employer can basically say, you know, uh, you asked this day off. I'll give it to you, but I'm not going to pay you. And you can't afford to take one day pay. Uh, I mm -hmm. think that in and of itself uh, is a big eye opener. Same thing when it comes down to, um, you know, your own personal boycotts. You have, uh, you know, certain companies out there that are actively going against what you deem as acceptable. Now, for me, this is me personally, I'm never going to push this on somebody. But for me personally, I will not spend my money on a company that does not uh, put my their profit, you know, my money in a good place. I mean, Dick's Sporting Goods, point blank. They came across as saying, hey, we're getting rid of uh, ARs and all, all weapons now. But uh, so they can actively fund gun control legislation. Well, if you're going over there to buy shoes, where do you think your dollars are going? So you're actively shooting yourself in the foot uh, because you don't have enough, uh, I wouldn't say perseverance, but you know you know what I'm saying, like to, to go somewhere else, to shop somewhere else. Uh, same principle when it comes down to, well, they're going to pass these laws and it's going to be horrible. I need to go protest, but I can't miss work because I can't afford it. That's where being prepared comes in. Like, mm -hmm. You have to put it 
you know, put your money where your mouth is. Hey, if you're going to tell people to do something, you need to be able to do it yourself. And that's the accountability aspect. A lot of us don't have that. And uh, that's why going back to basics, doing things that we all should be doing, stashing food, stashing water, making sure we got enough money in our bank accounts or at home or savings or wherever to where if we can't work for some reason, car accident, we get sick, whatever, uh, we're not going to be putting ourselves in jeopardy because we have to uh, do something on the bottom line. Yep. And I mean, you touched on a few really good topics there and they're all things that, I mean, I, I can only advocate because I'm, I'm far behind on all of them, but you know, I mean, I shop at Walmart. I need to set up alternatives for those things. And a a lot of it, you know, is just getting down to, to having those alternatives set up, like mostly making a lot of our own food. I mean, our family is fully capable of baking bread, but we buy it for convenience, you know? Um, and that's just silliness because homemade bread is better. But um, that, you know, spent, you know, uh, voting with your dollar. That That's one thing. And like I said, I'm not going to preach it to anybody because this is something I need to work on. But my point is I have not, I don't preach at people. And the fact that people can say that there is going to be a civil war, but they're not showing their stockpiles of food that they're going to be providing to their side. I mean, we were sort of joking around about this, but I knew there I I've known so far that there's not going to be a civil war because I haven't seen the supply trains and civil wars have supply trains. They have food depots. You know, it's not just like, oh, we're going to go take their food. You you need to have logistics and all the people that i've seen calling for civil war have not been talking about logistics they're just talking about um you know the idea of it and and that it's going to happen but uh that's getting into the weeds the point being whether it's a civil war whether it's whatever it is you need to have the wherewithal to be able to go for a week without having a check coming in that you can go cash and turn into the things that you need. I mean, we're all just juggling our lifestyles here, you know, and you're not going to be able to go to more than just one rally a year. You're not going to be able to go, not go to Walmart or whatever, unless you get ahead of yourself, you know, and that's what a lot of it is. If, if, uh, if the store that you shop at makes some huge political statement that you can't stand, better hope that you have at least enough of the stuff that you buy there to get you through until you're set up somewhere else you know what i mean and you're you're nowhere near being able to vote with your dollar if you're not you know already getting yourself set up like that so it's all about like you know like we've said incremental improvements and building momentum so that you have momentum you know you're not working from a dead stop whenever something bad happens like Tony said, whenever you lose a job, whenever you have an accident, it's about having that nest egg. It's it's about not being all talk and no show, you know, whenever, uh, shoot, who was it? I think, uh, who told, were you, did you tell me this or was it something that I heard on Minority Mindset? But, uh, I think Warren Buffett said it, uh, when the tide goes out, you see who's been swimming naked. Yeah. I. Jasper said it, and I I say it all the time too. It's it's so true because uh, there's always that speculative, uh, and this goes in for financials, but it also it can apply almost to literally anywhere. Um, prepping. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, and the the funny thing is, like, it doesn't even have to be about prepping when we talk about voting with your dollars. Uh, something as simple as like everybody's sick and tired of Hollywood, right? You're sick and tired of Hollywood people going up into your award shows and giving you 20 minute speeches about things because they live on this upper pedestal talking to to us people down below. Like we should do something different because they have the power of the microphone. Yet those people still go to the movie theater every single weekend and spend $50 at the theater. All you're doing is reaffirming to these elites that it's okay to talk like that because they're they're still getting a paycheck. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can completely go away from prepping for a second and talk about just basic who do you want to support mom and pop shops big corporations you know i got 
my town has a Walmart. And slowly, since it was built like 10 years ago, mom and pop places have closed. However, there are others that are still making a lot of money because uh, people understand that service is important still. We still have the money to, to, to decide, hey, service is important. And that's just kind of how uh, certain people shop, whatever. And there's a lot of people that go to Walmart because they want the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest. They don't care if they have to wait in line for two hours. You get others that are like, you know what? I don't want to wait in line. I want to have a good experience, so I'm going to pay. But because you have a choice, and I'm trying to not you know, go off on a hardcore tangent here, but I think that's kind of what I'm trying to hit is you have a choice to be able to do certain things in life. So to where you want to spend your money, to where you want to be prepared so you don't have to be beholden to somebody else forcing you to do something. So if you can make situations or uh, preparations now so you're not – someone's not holding something over your head, then that's what I'm trying to get at here. And when it goes back to our videos, is this you know 10-year bull market, 12-year – now what? It's 2020. Basically, a 10-year bull market run on Wall Street. Is that going to keep going? Probably not. No one searches for how to make, you know, things at home, uh, preparations at home, really cheap things while everything's going good. Things start going bad. They're going to be like, hey, I need to search for this real quick. Are they going to go to those channels that are talking about new political crap every single day? No. They're going to go to the channels that are like, hey, this is how you stretch your grocery budget for two weeks on 50 bucks. Right. So mm -hmm. I know that kind of yep. went all kind of all over the place, but that's how my mind fires. It's weird. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, I, I like how you brought it back around because that's what you and I have been talking about recently is just, uh, well, like with yours, uh, making food, you know, you're, you're showing people how to make food that's higher quality because they know what's in it. There's not all the preservatives and random crap that comes in food. Uh, nowadays whenever you buy it from the store and at the same time you're helping them the, the ingredients that they're using are ingredients that they're storing and getting ahead on and by doing that they're getting food cheaper than they would be getting it by having somebody else put random crap in it for them so mm -hmm. that's building sustainability and integrating a lifestyle that's actually more efficient and self-reliant and i mean self-reliance is you know it's really what we're doing here no matter who's that's that's the umbrella that we're all under here is whether you're a homesteader whether you're into just finances or whatever the whole goal in life survival is about being self-reliant i mean we're herd animals we need that but at the end of the day if you're beholden to somebody else you're beholden to the courthouse you're beholden to the grocery store you're beholden to your employer whomever it is that's that's your weakest link right there and so what we're about is identifying those and and strengthening them and you know that's why what i want to be focusing on here soon like we've been talking about is things like that how to stretch your budget by being able to produce things at home being able to uh not be beholden uh -oh. You know, the store, the, the, yeah, I noticed that I'm hiccuping. It's probably, it's probably my local internet provider telling me that I'm using too much bandwidth. But, oh, thanks, McGarvey. You have a good night. Um, but, you know, one of the things that bugs me the most is uh, being a consumer, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm somebody who's... I mean, I, I'm, I've become more gentle on the things that I own, but historically speaking, I'm pretty rough on stuff. I, I use it hard, you know. I've, I've usually been somebody who worked outside doing physical labor, and especially nowadays, consumer goods are made to be consumed and thrown away and replaced, and that is a losing cycle, especially when you're talking about self-reliance over long-term periods. And so, oh, now I lost Tony. Nope, I'm here. No. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it all just falls under that self-reliant uh, 
umbrella that you don't need to go find something from someone else every single time you have a hiccup or you need something. Well, I think that's one of the biggest, how should I put it? It's a glaring plot hole, I guess you could say in a lot of people's lives. Uh, and I, I don't get me wrong. I totally get it. If you have the money to afford it now uh, and you want to have these convenience items, absolutely go for it. But there's so many people that are just trying to, uh, it's called keeping up with the Joneses. Uh, they're trying to make it look like they can do something to where if you, like I said, the water goes out there by swimming naked. Uh, if that one paycheck can't get done, uh, they lose everything. And now they're stuck at square one. So uh, to avoid all that, we want to make sure that we're not beholden to people. And in order to do that, in today's society, you got to make sure you're on a good financial platform uh, mm -hmm. so to be able to put yourself on that platform. Uh, you're going to have to say no and realizing that you're a consumer first, like you're raised that, especially us, we were raised as consumers, child of, uh, you know, millennials and Gen Z's are children of advertising commercials, always thinking that I got a raise and so I can afford to get a bigger car or I can afford to get to buy this, not like, mm -hmm. oh, I got a raise. Hmm. I can pay more money on my mortgage now. Like, mm -hmm. how many of your friends think that way? I know a lot of mine don't. Mm -hmm. The first thing they do when they get a raise is they go get another expense, they go buy another depreciating asset. And next you know, they're actually more poor than they were uh, prior to that raise. So, yeah, it's that mindset that you have to acknowledge that you're you're trying to to beat. So when you when you kind of disconnect, you know, the whole Morpheus thing, when you disconnect from what you've been almost trained to think, uh, you're truly free, and you can actually make your own decisions and make your own choices and realize, you know, I don't have depend on the government for this. I don't have to depend on uh, my town to give me this. Uh, it's just, it's easier. Take some, you know. Way, just hmm. to clear up, because I, I do, there's a distinction with that Morpheus reference. Um, what he's referencing there isn't just the red, blue, red pill, blue pill thing. Uh, he's actually talking about, I think if I'm right, the scene where he's talking to Neo about all the people that are plugged into the Matrix. Mm -hmm who are going about their everyday lives, not realizing that they're just willingly being cogs in a system that they could just wake up out of. Yeah. They're being used and they don't realize it. And the minute you try to set them free, they want to fight for that system that they're being used by because they don't know any better. And exactly. unfortunately there's people out there that, I mean, we had this conversation, everything's spying on you. You have no, you know, privacy anywhere in your own car in your own home period and people are like ah eh, whatever it's like are you kidding me right now like you don't even care you have no concern about privacy whatsoever well if they want it they're gonna find it no sorry that's not that's not how this should work at all you know i want if if, if i paid you know two hundred thousand dollars for a house i want to make sure that i have a reasonable uh thought of privacy. If I spend $900 on a freaking phone, I want to make sure that when that screen's off, it's not tracking me. But mm. people are just like, oh, okay, well, whatever. It's going to happen anyway, so screw it, right? I'm not doing anything wrong. That's not what free people should be thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, we were talking about this the other day. It, uh, Well, I mean, we're here chatting. Mm -hmm. When 5G was the current thing, you guys remember back whenever 5G was going to kill us all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I wonder, you know, that was a really, they really did a good cover up on all the people they, uh, they laser fried with those 5G things. Cause like, we never heard about it again. Anyways. Um, I was making the point that 5G is simply a huge invasion of your privacy. And a lot of people, simply had the response that we we don't have privacy. And that's sort of, you know, the, the mentality is it's not a foregone conclusion. Privacy is actually, should be one of our biggest rights and, or one of our biggest concerns as people. 
and as you know people who want to have uh self-reliance uh but people don't want it you know people want to go about uh living their lifestyle living you know just sort of the storyline that they're currently used to and uh you know it's yeah basically what tony was saying about how um you try to crack the shell on people and they'll they'll fight to to stay in their little echo chamber and it's it's truly sad that people especially young people don't have any clue about liberty because they were they were born in it and they just almost got so spoiled by it they're trying to fight uh, and don't get me wrong i understand it like you you always want to strive to be better but the definition of better is not regression the definition of better is least you know less regulation and and less rules because we all as a society can know right from wrong anyway. But the fact of the matter, there's people out there that they don't know anything else. They never traveled. So they don't know anything else about how uh, truly unsafe they can really feel when they leave the country or the fact that governments really will uh, sneak into your phone, uh, pull something out and be like, Oh, well you texted this. So we're going to throw you in jail or, you didn't pay your TV tax and you're going to jail because you didn't pay for a TV tax. Like, are you kidding me right now? So I have to pay a tax to be able to own a television. Yep. And you missed your payment. So you owe us one week in jail. Like that happens. That's just a reality in the UK. Exactly. Um, but even, I mean, getting down to, I mean, we were talking about, uh, about Tesla's. We were talking about uh, automated cars and stuff. And what's funny, actually, I was just thinking about that conversation because I was with my folks. We were driving around delivering uh, some Valentine's Day gifts to random people from their church. And the map program, Google Maps, had us take a go through a neighborhood. We were driving down a road. It had us turn into a neighborhood and take a huge looping circle and then come back to the road. It was just a big loop and they weren't really paying attention to the map program, but it drove them along a, you know, along a road that they didn't need to go on. And then back to the same point about a hundred yards down. Cause it was just a neighborhood loop. And I was like, you know, it sure be funny if a gas station, if the local gas station could pay Google maps to make people drive extra and burn off their gas, you know, and that sounds crazy, but that is that is we live in a society where that is exactly what can happen and if you're selling all of your dry your computer you know your daily driving habits for one thing it's i mean google has already bragged that they can guess where you're going to be on any given day of the next week with more accuracy than the weather can be predicted and that's true so the more that we give away our privacy I mean, if you want to talk about crazy conspiracy theories, yeah, they can track where every person's going to be with a, a scary amount of accuracy and how they're going to react to things and, and what they're going to be doing where in their house. And people, uh, they care far too little about that kind of thing. And I mean, it, it may seem like a stretch, but it ties back into the rest of what we're talking about is taking your life into your own hands in, in really the ways that people did back in in the old days. I mean, they basically spent every minute of the day taking care of one thing or another to make sure that their life was in their own hands. Because if you didn't have your life in your own hands, you were likely to lose it back in the past. Well, think about it. Think about how, how much sense does it make if health insurance companies or whatever insurance companies, I mean, they're already doing it with car insurance now where they have the little ride-along apps that determine how you drive and that's how your rate's going to be. Imagine mm -hmm. if the health insurance companies get a hold of your banking information and through your banking information, they know that you go to fast food every single day and they can make your rates higher because they know that you eat uh, at Burger King, McDonald's, Popeye's, whatever, every single day. So they're like, well, this guy's going to have a... Uh, probably going to have a higher chance of getting a coronary uh, just by his purchasing habits. So we need to go ahead and up our insurance rate on him uh, next time, next time, blah, 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 or, uh, you know, increase the deductible. I mean, this is, 
something that hasn't been proven yet, but it can happen. And it's by our, the way our society is. So it almost makes sense if that did happen, uh, since money does rule all in our, our government lifestyle right now. So it's not too far fetched to think something like that could happen. But people are like, well, it can't happen to me. Well, I have nothing to hide. They can look. That's the type of stuff that you're letting happen when you, you know, let them monitor your habits, your, your money habits. Oh, well, they're just viewing stuff. It's no big deal. Ten years later. Wow, why does my insurance cost so much? Oh, for the last ten years, they've seen that you've been going out buying cigarettes or buying alcohol. Uh, going to the liquor store every week. So obviously you're going through uh, a fifth of Jack every week because you spend 25 bucks at the liquor store and then you go to fast food. So you obviously live an unhealthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So by giving up your privacy, that's the kind of stuff that you're allowing to happen. And mm -hmm. uh, so if you can go self-sufficient, even pay in cash to where they can't track what you're actually buying, uh, do that now, in my opinion. And that's what I do. Personally, I'm not telling y'all to do it, but that's just what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I. That's one one benefit that I can say that I have is, I may not have been raised financially savvy, but I've almost always used cash in hand that I had earned, and I've never gone into debt beyond what I accidentally got from overdraft. I've always bought vehicles outright and all that stuff. So at least I'm starting from scratch and not negative. But um, that mentality of, of spending cash rather than, you know, like, you know, tracking it for one thing. I mean, that's not why I've always spent cash. It's just the way that I was raised and grew up. But that is a huge thing. I mean, um, there's a reason that facebook makes the money that they do like you were saying and mm -hmm. a lot of it is because they are directly aggregating your information and selling it to corporations that are either building their profiles for people like you or just directly advertising it to you i mean when you sit when you talk about something and then you get an advertisement on google or facebook mm -hmm. or whatever that i mean that's that's a real thing that's they're they're literally just it's just a a speech to text program that's being used to advertise to you. And then that gets linked to you permanently. And, you know, I don't know. It just, well, think about it. Facebook alone makes $600 billion a year. That's their, I'm sorry, I'm a year, but that's their market cap is $600 billion. They don't have a product. Their product is free. So obviously Obviously, we are the product because they're using our information and it's already come out multiple times that they're either giving out personal information for analytical purposes. And that's why you see that stuff pop up on your. What's it called? Uh, sponsored, you know, the little sponsored ads. I looked up. I'm not kidding today. I was like, hmm, I want to build a little an island so I can make bread on a butcher block. And I looked up a butcher block on Google not kidding, exited out, went to Facebook, three down, three posts down was a uh, wood sourcing for butcher block. I'm like, okay, I don't even have the Facebook app. And it took five minutes for that to happen, not even five minutes for that to happen. I said, you know, <sighs> they're basically building so many profiles on us. They know how we're going to vote, how we're going to decide certain things, and they know what to gear to push you to spend your money and that's what they're doing and it drives me insane yeah and it just i mean sort of in the weeds there but you know yeah, that's just it ties in be, well you know it, it does it ties in because it's all about you know knowing what what is going on around you that is all stuff that is centered on you you are the subject of of machinations that you're mm -hmm. unaware of you know and it's all stuff that's going to come back and affect you. And the more that you can do to take, to be aware of that kind of stuff and empower yourself, the better off you're going to be. And so, but you know, it's, it's just, it's not as, as fun as the rest of the stuff. It's not as flashy, but it's the kind of approach that I think people need to have 
is, you know, like the Alexas and stuff like that. Like, yeah, they're good to have. It, it's inconvenient to get people in your household to go without that kind of stuff. But um, do you really want there to be a text log on the internet somewhere of all the things that you've ever said in your house? You know, because that that's the kind of thing that's going on is it's just recording it all. But and it's it's one of those things and we could open up all kinds of Pandora's boxes on what they can do with your stuff. I mean, you've seen the, the simple apps that can make you say stuff that you didn't actually say. Like I think they, they put something on like the president did a speech that was like fifteen minutes long on one of those websites that it's not he didn't actually say any of that. It was just yeah. It was just one of those things that were it was they're showing the capability of what can happen. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to come to the point where people in our generation are going to run for political office and you're going to have to sit there and wonder, did they actually say that? Cause the technology is so good. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously we're, we're kind of, I don't want to get off onto, you know, hardcore tangent or anything like that, but mm-hmm. bringing it back to the focus of this video, what we're actually talking about here when they have dirt on you like that and they can basically decide what you're going to, uh, what you're going to do because they'll expose whatever uh, it just puts you in someone's pocket. So I don't like to be in anybody's pocket and I don't think anyone else wants to be in somebody's pocket. So if you can take some of that power back by doing something in terms of quote unquote self-reliance, then uh, that's why I do what I do. And that's why I have this channel. So. Exactly. And that's, I mean, that, that's really what that, yeah, really is all about self-reliance and not being beholden to somebody and independence. I mean, that, that self-determination is what it's all about, basically, is having, having the power and the wherewithal and the awareness to plan your future and see it through, you know, that's, I think one of the biggest things that drives people into prepping is catastrophic life changes. I mean, you don't even, the majority of people who got driven into preparedness by the 2008 recession did not almost die. And that's why they're getting into survivalism. They, it happened because they realized that it's a losing game the way that it's going in this system, by playing the system the way that you do, you can make a 10 year plan and almost guarantee that something's going to happen to F that up between now and then. So a lot of what we're trying to focus on here, rather than having prepping and sustainability, steading, whatever, be about reactionary stuff, it's about fortifying. It's about looking at all the things that can come along to mess up your plans and getting ahead of them and, you know, hedging your bets, not having to worry about what is that thing that's going to come along and take away my mortgage and take away my cars and make me have to go move because I was set up hoping that things were going to continue the way that they are. You know, you're it's, it's, it's sandbagging all of your stuff is what we're trying to get around to. Basically. And I thoroughly enjoy my current lifestyle. Uh, I think when I, when I decided I wanted to do what I'm doing, you know, where I grow my own food, I'm living out solo and I can make a lot of my own stuff. I'm okay. I'm the type of guy that will sit there and buy the tools required to make something versus actually buy it for cheaper. That's just the type of person that I am just in case I want to make two or, you know, that's the way I tell myself, I, Hey, I could make two of these and I'll be good. Cause all the upfront went to it, but mm-hmm. the capability of being able to know what's in something. Uh, how many times have you bought furniture? And you're like, okay, cool. And then you realize it's just pressed together particle board and it falls apart in a year anyway when you could have gone out and build your own out of pine and be like, okay, at least I know it's made out of pine. Same principle with your food. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've popped open a can of chunky soup and it's got like three pieces of meat in there. I'm like, wow, I paid like $3 for this can of soup with like – two marble sized pieces of meat and then maybe one half dollar sized piece of meat and the rest of it's broth and vegetables. Is it really worth three dollars? No. I'll make my own. It's cool. And I'm not yeah. worried about killing myself on salt. So yes, there's some things out there that are, are totally make more sense to buy, but just the type of person that I am, if I can do it myself, I'm gonna do it. And it makes me sleep better. Hey Ting Ting for that, that video. 
makes me sleep better knowing that I have the capability of doing that because I spend my spare time, my hobby time, uh, just trying to perfect what I do. So instead of being, you know, one of those TV watchers that just watches reality, mindless television, uh, you know, do something to make yourself better. Exactly. And you touched on two really good topics there. And the first one's that soup. I don't know if anybody remembers my video about soup a little while back, but uh, holy crap, Campbell's soup. I had not had Campbell's soup in a while. No. I'm not looking to get uh, like flagged or attacked here, but holy crap, it tasted like dog food. And uh, I, I I had gone and stocked. I was like, oh, I'll grab I'll grab a stack, you know, I'll grab like five cans of soup and put them at work and just have them that way. I have a quick, easy meal, and I've also got you know a little more, you know, in my little cubby hole, a little more food stacked up there and get, get in case I get stuck for a couple days. And I don't know what I'm going to do with the other cans of soup that I have sitting here because. I have smelled dog food that I like literally at that moment would have eaten instead of that. And I'm not, I'm not being like, you know, asinine here. I literally like, I think Fisker's cat food smells considerably better than that soup smelled that day. I actually, I opened up all the doors in the building because yeah. Anyways, my point being I'd rather be, you know, that that day I decided I'm going to jar my own soup and just bring it to work, you know, and just have a few jars of of some good soup sitting there and make sure I eat them before a few months is up or whatever. But, um, you know, just, just that. And I lost the other thing that you mentioned that was really good. But um, I'm just that, again. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's just that kind of stuff that... Uh, you know, enriches your life and and just makes things easier, gives you comfort and really is beneficial in the long run, uh, you know, financially, because like you said, I mean, um, you can either do things cheaper. I think, oh, that was the other thing is, is getting ahead with the tools and and investing the money. You can, you know, you can spend however much and just get that project done uh, with the tools that you have or else you can go and get that thing and know that you've expanded your repertoire and that you're able to just to just produce that from now on it's just a thing that you've taken care of you know um, and that's just another bit of self-reliance and independence um, not to sound like a communist here but you know seizing the means of production you know um, well we've got so we've gotten so far from from a person being able to produce things, you know, like, um, well, back to the consumerism, like what is wrong with wearing patched clothes? You know, uh, that's sort of the, even just not being trained by our parents to be consumers, we're taught that it's just cheaper to go and buy another, however much, de- you know, a, a Walmart pair of jeans rather than buying a decent pair of jeans and, and fixing them every once in a while and being okay with wearing jeans that are, have clearly been patched or something. Um, you're giving yourself the skills to do that in real situations where you've got to make your clothes last and you're actually, you know, stretching your money now. Um, it's just the mentality that, you know, there's something wrong with something that doesn't look brand new and it's cheap enough to go and get it rather than, saving that money, using it for something else and finding a way to make do with what you have by being something besides a throwaway consumer. You know, I tend to wear things until they're unwearable, uh, but I'd probably be better off. You know, that's, that's something that I do plan to get into is uh, stretching what you have, you know, and if that means spending a little more, I know it is hard to do, but there are still good enough quality products that you can purchase the higher quality one and have it last more than twice as long as the half as expensive product, especially if you're, you know, valuing it. Like, um, a lot of people don't have relationships with their items anymore. This is something we were chatting about the other day. You know, you build a relationship with your tools. Whenever you work with a tool, whenever like that's your job, uh, 
soldiers and their weapons or, or their gear, you know, whenever you're out, um, if you're out on like a long, like if you're doing the Pacific Northwest trail or something like that, and you're hiking for a week or two weeks, you build a relationship with your stuff that a lot of people in today's society don't have because you're going to break your phone or upgrade it eventually. There's no point in getting attached to it like you might with a knife or a hatchet or a shovel, you know, and that sounds stupid. Like I have shovels that I have relationships with, you know, but that's a different mentality from like break it, get a new one, move on. Um, and it's a mentality that people don't have, which that was necessary, you know, back in a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, the proportionate cost to purchase a thing like a chair or a piece of clothing or shoes compared to your life hours, the amount of time that went into that, it was a lot more than nowadays. So you appreciated what you have. And that's the kind of thing that we need to get back around to both when it comes to the things that we have and that we use and the food that we eat and all that stuff. Um, it's, it's beneficial and, and you know, it's, it just gives you a lot more uh, power over your life when you have an understanding of what is involved in that when it affects you, you know? Well, I think you hit on something very, very important here. And that's, you know, obviously the give and take, uh, I think if we actually just took a step back and I say, we, I mean like as a population took a step back and realized like we're working, you know, some people are working 60, 70, 80 hours a week just to afford basic stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're working and they buy products that they can't make themselves or don't want to make themselves because they don't have time. So it's almost like a never ending cycle. Like, working a four say you work a, a full-time job 40 hour a week job and you spend two hours a day in, in traffic so mm -hmm. that already you're spending probably an hour or two at work paying for that gas to and from work that day and then another three hours at work to pay for that car that car payment for the month and then it's like wow i'm i'm basically it's, it's called the rat race you know you're just basically doing a big circle so you have no life whatsoever and you have no passions. It's just, you wake up, go to work and do it all over again for what reason. So to make, and I know it sounds kind of weird, but there's a lot of people out there. You could put a video right now and you could title it how to make money and mm -hmm. people won't click it. They'll click the entertainment thing just to get five minutes to themselves and not have to worry about thinking about money at all uh, mm -hmm. because they're, you know, so upside down to where they're at and they just want to escape. And I understand like this community especially can be considered that way where some of the people take the fear a little too far just because it's a, a break from reality. Cause you know, there is an entertainment factor to that and I get it. Yeah. But, it's hard. I mean, even it's hard not to, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're sitting here, you're like, what am I going to make a video about? dang, where the, there is that one thing, there's that one obvious thing that I can make a video about. I mean, I almost have to, I almost have to make a video about that thing, you know, but it's like, you know, it, it, it is hard sometimes to, to think of something that, that portrays value, but, um, or, or to find something that delivers you value, but it's, it's just important to be discerning about, what you're looking for, you know, it's just, there are certain things out there and I think it's going to eventually come back in a, in a big way. Um, the government is printing off money left and right with, with a new quantitative easing. Uh, inflation's going up. There's no doubt about it. Inflation's going up and it's outpacing wages every single time. Yeah. We got an increase in wages the last couple of years. Yeah, we did. But inflation numbers are not what they're saying it is. Cause if you go to anywhere, basic you realize wow it costs a lot more I, I think about it go to somewhere like mcdonald's somewhere where when i was in high school i could get full off like three bucks three four dollars now it takes 12 15 has mm -hmm. your wages increased three times the amount you know i mean has the average wage increased three times the amount of course not mm -hmm. so being able to do things for yourself can 
take that power back. It's got to the point now where they're doing subscriptions for everything to where you have to subscribe to this TV station, you know, with Roku or whatever you have. Then you got to subscribe to your Apple iTunes. You got to subscribe to something on your cell phone. So they're just nickeling, diming you to death to the point where you look at your budget every single month. You're like, wow, I spend 80% of my stuff on these little small, small charges that I don't realize all add up to this. And you got nothing left over. Well, eventually it's going to come to the point where people are going to get laid off. We're going to get that inevitable economic downturn. That's going to happen regardless. I mean, you can't be perfect forever. And how are people going to be able to afford things? Well, a good solution to that is to trade, to barter. And if you have a good skill where you can trade for something, hey, I used to work on cars. I'm a, I'm a master tech. I'll go work on your car. You're a carpenter. Can you help me with my porch? That seems to be sagging. Okay. Uncle Sam's not a part of that. Something mm. simple like that. Do it. I helped my neighbor with his fence. I dug all the holes for him so he could put his fence down. Guess what? He's also a processor. I got my deer processed for free. Mm-hmm. No taxes involved. Yeah. Why not, right? Right. And that's, I mean, it's literally something that anybody can do. Like, um, if you're a lawyer, you know, you, if you're, if you're, you know, cause some people do make a lot of money, their time is better served chasing a dollar and spending it on prepping than making a, making a shovel themselves. You know what I mean? And I can understand that if you're, you know, but you can still, mark you know they're they're marketing their skills in whatever venue that they have but all the way down to you know i i have been one of the poorest people i've been unemployed in an area where i had no skills to market where whatever you know where the only thing that i had to make money was to put rollerblades on and go around collecting cans for deposit you know but that was what i found and i made more money than most of my peers by doing that but there are things i mean that that's scrounging but there are things that anybody can do you know uh like you were saying craft skills um things that a person can do that just take their skill that can be that are a means of production that um like you were saying being a mechanic uh there are things that are that people are looking for now that it just takes research and practice for you to have something that is a deliverable product, you know? Um, and that's just something that gets lost in the mix. in a lot of the, the discussion here, like you were saying, it's, it's, it's easy to go and make, to make videos about whatever topic is hot, whatever topic you can, pull up some web pages on or make a little bit of research and regurgitate information, which we're all guilty of. I mean, some really good videos come from people coalescing or collating different points from different points on the internet and sharing it with you, but it's not just screen grabbing an article or another page and sharing it to you. Uh, some of the best stuff is where someone is putting some concise thought into it and delivering you something that is going to be a producible skill, you know? Um, and I don't, sort of lost my track there, but. Well, it's just think about it this way. Like you have certain things that, and I'm, I'm guilty of it. I'm actually, I got a video coming out uh, in a few days about where I basically took a topic that you can read about yourself. And I kind of put my own personal twist on it. Um, because there's a list, there's a lesson to be learned from a lot of things like that. And, you know, that's fine. Uh, that's why, I mean, I do it, but when it comes down to marketable skills, the whole goal in my opinion for me is I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to pay taxes or I don't have to have someone watching me uh, monitoring where all my stuff's going. I want to at least know that if I want to go trade for something, I can or I can go make money if whatever market goes. And Chasing Life made a good point in the comment section about these uh, high school kids getting paid 15 bucks an hour to sit on their cell phone and ignore people. Kids these days have no personal skills. 
they're so used to playing online and doing everything on a computer when it comes to actually interpersonal stuff, they can't do it to the point where now interpersonal is a skill. Being able to talk to somebody is a skill. So it is. It, it's something you really don't think about, but it's true. Yeah. I mean, I, on one level, I'm a little bit, I'm socially inept, you know, like if you met me personally, I'm very friendly. I'm a very good friend, but I'm not the kind of person that people seek to be around on a social basis. You know what I mean? And I'm fine with that. I've always been the oddball or the fringe of the social group kind of person. But on the other hand, in a uh, uh, hospitality setting, you know, when I work in a restaurant, when I work in service, I am mm -hmm. always hands down and I'm not tooting my own horn. It's just, I'm always given uh, compliments on my service, on my interpersonal, on people skills. You know what I mean? Whenever it comes to being a manager or whatever, um, <clears throat> it is lost. You know what I mean? And, and I'm not tooting my own horn. Cause like I say, in other social venues, I, I'm very lacking, but, um, it is it is glaring when somebody does not pick up social cues and and I'll admit like I mean I'm I'm very anti bashing on millennials but I'm I'm also fully willing to admit I mean a lot of us are completely socially inept whenever it comes to a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. and I mean I am constantly you know just uh, you know sort of peeved at people younger than me or or my own peers by by things just like that where you sort of you say something and they'll just sort of grunt back and it's like dude i just said something to you at least like i mean and that's all age groups like there's there's grumpy old people that do exactly the same thing for different reasons but um yeah i just just reading body language i mean something as simple as someone doesn't want to have this conversation you should stop talking and let them go or someone's in a really bad mood and you should be able to tell how they're walking at you. If they're not in a very good mood, get what you need to get said out of the way and move on mm -hmm. certain little things that you don't get unless you have social interaction. And, you know, my cousin's queen of this. She just doesn't have that reading people. She's smart as that, you know, can be, she's book smart, but she just doesn't have that reading people kind of smart. So, when it comes down to that, you know, marketable skill, she can draw her face off. I mean, she is an artist and a half, but she just doesn't have those interpersonal skills. So, um, I don't even know how to put it. Like, we have a situation here. Uh, obviously, we have a generational gap, generational mm -hmm. issue, but we have a, an issue where there's a lot of people on this platform that have really good interpersonal skills but they have no inter information behind it or mm -hmm. vice versa I have a lot of really good information and no interpersonal skills so having a good creator and having a good uh, community we can all take our individual skills and we may not have the most interpersonal skill but we can at least get the point across i don't know mm -hmm. if that makes any sense no it does and yeah just going talking about the interpersonal skills it is one of those topics that is very difficult to make videos about or to talk about or to tell people here's what you can do but it will be one of the biggest threats or detractors in situations if you will is the breakdown between people because i mean pretty much everything that you just mentioned I would argue just comes down to society is self-centered nowadays. I mean, we, we have perfectly set it up so that everybody can be living in their own little world to at least a far enough extent to be comfortable and to be living their own narrative and not need to bump up into everybody's all the time. You know what I mean? And a lot of stressful situations, a lot of, I mean, yeah, just stressful situations are just going to throw that, you know, throw a wrench into that. It's just going to shatter it, you know, because we're all, you know, not tuned to that. We're not used to give and take. We're not used to being aware of somebody else. You know what I mean? Having a concept of what's going on in their head, being able to interact that in a stressful situation where, yeah, there's give and take. There's, there needs to be cooperation because like it or not, 
we have perfectly set up most of our systems to not actually take true cooperation, but just interface, if you will, you know? Well, just think how many kids these days, how many people these days don't have the inner monologue, like to where you're telling a story and you're like, wow, this story is not as interesting as I thought it was going to be. And like your inner monologue is like in the story now, like they don't, have, they don't have that. And uh, obviously I'm not trying to bash on younger people, generation. X. I mean, I re- like you said, everybody has that issue, but. Uh, well, and it's true. And I, I, I don't want to start firing yeah. back, and forth, but plenty of old people. I mean, I can't tell you how many older folks will pull out their phone while I'm trying to, to serve them. They're at my counter trying to get me to work with them and they are just gone. I mean, they're just, they're gone until they come back, you know, mm-hmm. but no, and, but I will admit, I mean, when you raise somebody in it, when you put a phone in a child's hand and say, this is what I want you to be doing. I mean, that's, that's what you're, you're building them to be. So and in that case, it's not the millennial's fault. And that's most of what I get to is, you know, you, you can't blame someone for being put in front of a tablet from the age they were four. You know, that's oh, it's yeah. just an experiment. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you. But and when it comes down to how things kind of smear together, how everybody interacts with each other, having those skills really does pay off. And mm-hmm. if we can try to bring this back to the whole purpose of the <laughs> today uh which i mean it's cool when you when you jump off on the side it's no big deal i think we can all translate things a certain way but these skills that are so mundane and small to to normal people i say normal people but the people like us the uh, majority of people that not maybe not everybody has you may be helping out that one or two uh, people that new person uh, by posting these small mundane videos uh Mm -hmm. but when you go back and search it hey i need to learn how to uh refill my propane bottles oh look tyler from let's talk about prepping has a video about that that's awesome Uh, going back having quality content having things that you can do in a pinch small little question i mean how many times has someone said hey how do i uh how do i fix this or how do i take this apart I don't know. YouTube it mm-hmm. all the time. Everybody says that. I don't know. I'm sure it's on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Something like that. That's what like, the, whole purpose, the purpose of this needs to be. Yeah. Uh, shouting you back. I mean, literally, I mean, propane bottle is nice, you know, but that's just one. But I mean, mayonnaise. I mean, quite possibly one of my favorite videos of yours is homemade mayonnaise you know and I, I need to make it and just do a vr because i have not actually made it myself but i love it because that's that's infinite mayonnaise and you can make that using stuff that either you can have i mean what do you need eggs and and some other a few other things but you can make that using stuff that you can produce and grid down you know and literally a person can watch that one video and if they memorize how to make mayonnaise, let's say that there's an economic freeze or a food crisis to where the general food transportation system breaks down and pretty much everywhere you can only get food that is produced in your within 100 miles or a couple hundred miles, right? I mean, crazy to think about, but it's possible, right? Anything can happen. Yeah. You could be the mayonnaise person. I mean, think about it you may be the only person in your entire town who can make mayonnaise. And all you would need to do is go to the market every day and have a person who brings you eggs and a person who brings you vinegar and a person, you know, whatever. And you, you arrange it and you just whip out mayonnaise for everybody. You know, I mean, that would be a very pigeonholed thing. You probably would not be able to live off of just making mayonnaise, but that is just one video, which gives you a skill which could you be your thing, you know what I mean? And by finding five of those things, you can build, you know, stuff. You have skills that are nuggets that will produce for you infinitely, you know, more, much more than a five-gallon bucket of rice. And think about bread. 
something as simple and Steve uh, keeps telling me that I need to put a, a video about it, how we've mankind has had it for 4,000 years. Uh, something as stupid as easy as bread. Now I can go back and take it to uh, people don't want to cook anymore, but that's like their favorite person. The one that brings them food, you know, mm-hmm. just like, I don't want to do this if I don't have to, but I really do. Uh, and like grandma cooks. I love grandma cause grandma cooks. I don't want to do it, but she does. So when it comes down to things like bread, basics, things that you may not be able to go get, the fact that you can go to your cupboard and be like, wow, it's only four ingredients and I can make this from scratch. I'm now in control of my own destiny. Awesome. Because mm-hmm. a couple of videos back, I made a comment about whenever, say, uh, there is famine or whatnot, they don't give you MREs. They don't drop Taco Bell. They don't yeah. drop Pizza Hut. They give you bags of rice and flour like what can you do with that Mm -hmm. and it gets i don't know about how many people in the chat have uh eaten the same thing over and over and over but it gets to the point where you physically can't do it Mm -hmm. like like you're stuck you'll throw it up yeah you gag like because you can't eat it anymore so by offering up small little things that are just mundane Mm -hmm. uh you're giving people options. And I think if you can give people options to take some of that power back, then that's a win every single time. That's a win. And I mean, translating that to the audience, you know, um, that's how I've been digesting my content lately, you know, because, um, and I, and like I said, I, I love live streams. I like going in and hanging out, like, mm-hmm. especially, Will at Just In Time Prepping. He's somebody that I've been hanging out in his live stream for a very long time. I met a lot of you guys there um, just because I like the atmosphere, I like the people there, I like hanging out. But at the same time, you know, whenever I that goes off and I click, you know, it just goes off into some random video, you know, there's a lot of videos, a lot of time that you can be spending learning skills uh, rather than, you know, shooting the breeze, which... I know that I said that in the same sentence talking about Will, but uh, my point being, ask yourself, why are you watching what you're watching? You know, are you building skills? Are you reinforcing in your mind what you want to be going towards? You know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there who are passionate about what they're doing, who are passionate about helping you uh, build, you know, have helping you have the skills to improve your life, you know? And so um, that's just sort of a little bit of the, I guess you could say public awareness message that we sort of have been, you know, wanting people to hear is, um, you know, what we hope people are here for is to be building community, a community, not just here on YouTube, but in their own local area and just at large, of people who are building sustainability and independent, you know, self-reliance and building these skills, uh, especially ones that are, you know, I mean, you could say somewhat traditional as one way to look at it. Uh, just to think, yeah, just, I mean, well, okay. Something Tony was saying, you know, that is just a really good way to look at it is when you look back at the traditional skills that a person has i mean blacksmith whatever um traditionally people specialize in things that are marketable within a small economy essentially if you you know that's that's what you're looking at whether it's our friends here on youtube that we send things back and forth through or you've got someone who has eggs and you have cheese or whatever um you know, you need, you need a specialization. That's, that's specialization is what got us beyond hunter gatherers. And as much as the hunter gatherer mentality is popular to preppers and survivalists, we never, you know, we were not a thriving species until we reached agriculture and specialization and village life where you were able to focus on one thing and produce it to the max and trade with people and, and have, I mean, specialization, having things that you offer to others and which also were beneficial to you. So 
Um, well, that's just the, yeah the the approach we want people to think of. But go ahead. No, I to ask the thing like, uh, and how do you, how you doing, Wayne? Uh, I've seen you sneak in there. Um, that's the thing that I think a lot of people need to pay attention to like, what skill do you have that can translate to something, not even say a, an SHTF scenario, but like just in general for everyday life that all those classic uh, jobs, craftsman jobs, whatever jobs that people had in their small community have now been relegated to hobbies. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, you want to make cider. That's now a hobby. That's somebody's, I mean, don't get me wrong. People still have careers where they brew beer, they, you know, make out, but it's been so, commercialized and it's it happens so many thousands of miles away now most of the stuff there's nothing really local anymore so you want to do it yourself because you can mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm definitely all about that so being able to make these small uh have a little hobby or two or three that uh, is something you can potentially barter in a uh, i mean hell i have eggs i have chickens i can't tell me times i went to work at carmax and had the the dudes there being like hey you got a dozen eggs for me. And that was like the, the thing mm -hmm. I would eggs for $3 a dozen, uh, mm -hmm. because these things taste so much better than I can get from a grocery store or, Hey, I, I make my own hot sauce. Hey, you got any more of that hot sauce? Yeah. I'll sell you some. I mean, I, I'm not getting rich off this kind of stuff, but it's just nice to be able to know that I can make a little bit extra cash with a skill that I have. So, well, or a resource. Is and that's the thing is you're not getting rich off of it now, but I mean, arguably, I mean, people, for one thing, people who are on fixed income or disability who count five or $10 as a huge deal, mm -hmm. they're, you know, they could get rich off of that. That would, you know, I mean, th those kinds of things are the things that could be game changers. And I mean, you hey, don't know, you don't know what's out there until you encounter it. You know what I mean? So, any one of us in this chat room, whether you're a content creator or not, probably has some craft or skill or something that if they were to be like, oh, yeah, you can totally do this thing. All you need is this. Somebody else might be like, wow, that's totally something that I can do, which I can produce five dollars a day with. You know, I know people who need that, you know, and five dollars a day may not be much to someone who's working a salary, but that's a huge amount to someone who does not have five dollars a day to prep with or, or to get ahead with, you know. So um, it is a big deal, you know, and it's important to remember, for instance, like you mentioned cider. I'm for anybody who I haven't mentioned it to. I plan on uh, looking at fermenting cider and learning how to ferment stuff, starting with apples and cider because I enjoy and I enjoy drinking hard cider. Now, that's not something that I can trade and make money with right now legally, even, but it is something that I mean we know that there are people who brew beer, brew cider. I mean, I can go out there and get people to give me apples for free, brew it and then sell it back to them or trade it back to them for ammunition that they reloaded or eggs from someone like Tony and then also for other things. And while my, right now that might not be putting money in the bank for me in a grid down economy or in an economy where food prices have doubled or tripled, but everything else stays the same because let's face it, it's a lot more likely that gas or food prices or both will just skyrocket, but we're all expected to just go along like everything's normal than a lot of these spectacular situations. And if that happens, it's going to be a lot bigger deal that you have friends who can sell you food at black market prices. You know what I mean? Or be the person providing black market food, you know? And it's silly to think of that, but as soon as that happens, your ability to produce food from scratch is no longer a hobby it's actually, you know, you're, you're like, you're going to be a drug dealer. You know what I mean? That's the kind of money you could be making. <laughs> well, there's, it's funny because there's people in the chat right now and every single one of them has something they're really freaking good at that yeah. I'm not. <laughs> so if we were all in a smaller location, if we were all in a certain town, what do you think we would be doing with each other? You know, we would all be working together as our community because no one, and, and that's why, 
agriculture was so important to, to mankind because when we were finally able to start growing our own food and stay stationary, we could, dele- you know, or sorry, relegate certain people to that job and it frees up the other part of the population to do other things. Mm-hmm. So that's what, that's why, you know, community works, society works. So uh, the people in the chat right now, I mean, I see what well, we got a nurse, we got a welder. I mean, we got all kinds of people in here that can mm-hmm. do things that I cannot do mm-hmm. point blank. And, you know, you're going to start. Even if you can, I mean, a lot of preppers are jacks of all trades, but even if you're good at a lot of things, there's something, you know, I mean, you, you got to appreciate the, uh, the experience, the, you know, somebody who has taken what they've done and applied themselves, you know what I mean? And put the time into it and those nuances and tricks. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just, just like you were saying, it, it's like a, a small community, you know, I mean, it, well, it that's all- what we are. That's what we are right now. We're, we're spreading ideas, whether you're a creator or you're a watcher mm-hmm. throughout our little community. If we actually start, I mean, not start, but I mean, if we, we put out quality information that gives people an option to be like, okay, well, I can go to this channel for this. I can go to this channel for that idea. Mm-hmm. And we can constantly keep making everybody around us better. And that's what I want versus just pissing in the wind and talking about whatever topic that, you know, old men talk about while sitting at the, the coffee table, like, or in the changing room. Like, I don't want to just shoot the breeze about whatever current event happens now. But, hey, you know, food prices are getting high. Uh, you know, my wife got laid off. How am I going to be able to, to make do with what I got? Boom, I got a solution for you. Hey, uh, the just just happened in my town. Uh, the cell phone service went out and the cable went out. How am I going to pay for all this stuff at the store without cash? Because I carry nothing but card. You know, mm-hmm. simple things, simple habits that we can talk about that get, you know, everyday people uh, can use. Why not? That's just what we need to start focusing on as a community and uh, steer away from straight up doomer. You're going to die tomorrow kind of stuff. Yeah. And Ogre here, I'm responding to, I'll just say it verbally, but he makes a really good point. Well, a point that's important to address that it could be hard to find people to network with. And I think that that is one of the biggest hurdles that keeps people from going beyond audiencing on here, or even a lot of content creators to break beyond the YouTube prepper mentality, you know, because there's a big difference between, and this, this is part of why I talk to people outside of my channel is to keep myself grounded and to keep my prepping a thing. That's not just something I talk about on YouTube and do when I, when I buy something or when I work on a prep or on a project, you know what I mean? Um, Oh, absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about. And I think that's what you're talking about. Walking the walk and talking the talk or talking the talk, walking the walk. Yeah. Um, But back to like what Ogre's talking about there is, um, you know, it, it, it can be hard to find people, but, it does not need to be about networking for community for prepping because, and that's one thing, the majority of us will never build a mag group. Not, I mean, we, we can achieve something very like it. And in doing that, we may end up with a mag group, but this concept of aiming at building a mag group is self-defeating from all the things that you can be achieving. I mean, you can find somebody who wants to trade their eggs for your rhubarb or whatever, and they never need to know that you're a prepper, you know? And then you can also have somebody who will always come and work on your car for a six pack of beer. And then if you start brewing that beer and get it to be good enough that he likes it, you never have to pay for mechanic work again. You just make sure you've got beer to trade for your mechanic work. You know, a lot of mechanics will do work for a gallon of beer or whatever you know but something to trade man it's yeah whatever 
or or reloading ammo you want to you want a good reason to reload ammo but it's never going to make it cheaper for you well you know you can at least pass it off to your wife that that's how you get whatever paid for you know um and those people never need to know that you're a prepper or that you're building community with them you know what i mean they just but when that grid goes down, when the situation happens, you know they're going to come look into you. You know they're they're going to go who, not necessarily who is someone that I can get food from, but who's going to be doing things, who's going to be producing something, who's going to have a reason for me to want to be around them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep, and I think that's the best part about having this uh, this platform is it's not just who I'm stuck with in my town, I can uh, get on here, you know, get to meet really cool people that I have a lot in common with that. Mm -hmm. I have a certain skill that I'm good at. There's certain few things that I'm good at. And there's other things that I'm weak on point blank. I'm weak on communication. I'm weak on medical. There's things I don't talk about because I don't know anything about them. There Mm -hmm. are people, our community that are really, really, really good at that. And it's really nice to be able to be like, if I have a question, I know who to go to. I got a solar question. Hmm. Well, let me call up Reed. Hmm. Perfect. Right there. You know, certain people are just really good at certain things. And it's nice to have that here now. And uh, when you put out certain videos about these certain subjects, it's like, okay, well, I can put this in a playlist and I can watch this if a situation ever comes up. Congratulations. Putting out useful, good information for everybody to come back to uh, is paramount here and that's what we're, you know that's what it's all about in my opinion mm-hmm. absolutely i'm just catching up a little bit here no it's I've, no um, um yes you can have you can have some of my pizza but it might be bad when it gets to california there over dad the best part about tony's pizza is he will show you how to make it yourself that's right my i made calzones yesterday so Everything I had on there, if you were on my Instagram, it was on there. I have it in the video, so you can do it yourself. It's really not that hard. I try to give you the tools. So, was it uh, teach a man to fish? Give a man a fish. I'm teaching you. So, boom, let's get it done. And uh, I just realized it is almost 1:30 here. It's way past my bedtime. Yeah, dang. <laughs> well, thank you for joining. And I know we started late, especially for you East Coasters, but it's been a good conversation. Absolutely. But yeah, you go ahead and tap out whenever you're ready. I'll hang out and let people chat for a minute. But I think we'll go ahead and let it wrap up now. But yeah, no problem. It's just uh, I just wanted to take the chance and uh, chat with everybody. You know, it's uh, there's been a lot of just focus on stuff that I don't feel is helping individuals build their preparedness or self reliance. And, I, you know, we've been talking about it a lot. A lot of us in comments and stuff have been talking about it, audience members and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it just there's a, there's a lot to be said for focusing on what will help you progress in what you want to do. And that's the kind of conversation, you know, uh, that I plan. I know Tony plans on focusing mm-hmm. on in future videos is just uh, sticking to practical down to earth stuff that's going to help individuals find something that's going to help them progress. So uh, that is something that you guys are interested in. Do bear with us because some of the topics are intentionally going to be not flashy. They're going to be ones that, uh, you know, they're, they're not fun, but they're, you know, like most things, they are things that uh, you just need to grit your teeth and do, but we're going to try to always make it be uh, interesting and valuable to you guys. So yep. anyways, real life, real life stuff, things that you can legitimately use, even if there's not some sort of big giant dumb scenario, like legitimately I can wake up tomorrow and I could be like, you know, I want to make a sandwich. Hmm. I really want to make my own bread. Or I really want to, uh, you know, I like silver. I really like the color, you know, to, to hold it, to have it out. I wonder if there's any other reason why I should have it. Something mm-hmm. simple, you know, not because there's some sort of doomsday scenario happening, but because, hey, I like it. So, boom, let's get it done. And uh, let's start putting out some really good content for everybody to come back and rewatch six months later. 
because it's just that good stuff. So, yeah. Well, yep, I agree. And I, you know, everybody, if you are not watching a lot of Tony's stuff, uh, I need you to get over there because he has really been for a long time focusing on, you know, I mean, I try to focus on valuable content that I think you guys will like, that I think will at least be interesting for that video. But Tony will really spend multiple days not making other videos so that he can focus on one that he really feels is going to be something that somebody's going to like. And he's really doing a lot of uh, behind the scenes work here lately to try to build something that's going to progress this community that we're in. So definitely go back channel him if you're doing anything to watch on YouTube because uh, a lot of good stuff on his channel there. So I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. I probably really appreciate yeah. that. That's Absolutely. just the goal, man. I want to, I want to say that one person uh, that you know has a question and wants to try something new. Is that one more person that you have that you help? It's the one less you know person that's going to come knocking on your door uh, in a in a bad time. So, absolutely, we got to focus on. Yep. Well, thank you, and yep, and thank you everybody for being here and hanging out. And I hope you're all doing well, everybody. Uh, Keep progressing, keep building, and everybody stay safe out there, and we'll see you in some future videos here soon. Yep. See y'all later. All right. See you guys.